Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pumped Up Show. I am Julia Martinez, and tonight, co-hosting with me is Leo Manahan. Hello. Promotions uh, events coordinator and talent promoter of Pumped Entertainment, and also a Red Seal chef and MMA fighter. And Colin Moreland, owner of Moreland Professional Projects and MPP Photography, um, and also one of our major sponsors for all our upcoming events. How are you both doing tonight? Great. Thanks so much for having me here, Julie. Oh, no problem. It's our pleasure. Mm. How are you, Leo? Oh, I'm good right now. Um, you can watch us on jessfm.ca or facebook.com slash jessfm or Jess, uh, TV. You can also download the app on um, Apple Store or Google Play or watch us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So, um, tonight we are here to talk about Colin Moreland is actually one of the top 40, under 40, uh, as nominated, voted by Chamber of Commerce. Tell us more about that. Well, thanks, Julia. Yeah, uh, for <clears throat> 2018, we had the opportunity of uh, <clears throat> being nominated by the Chamber, and uh, I admittedly thought it was a bit of a long shot, but uh, yeah, they uh, had announced that last year, and it's just uh, phenomenally honoring to be part of that group. So did you receive, like, a plaque for it? Yeah, uh, Rachel Harder, our MP, did up a nice little certificate of recognition. So put that up in my office and just kind of a fun way to remember that. Yeah, because I remember I was messaging you when, um, when, when you, uh, you were actually headed there to receive your award or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm so proud to know you, like I said to you before, yeah. So, Colin. What do you think the biggest thing that put you on the map for that award was? Probably some of the work with the university. Mm -hmm. um, I've moved on since then, but establishing the project management office mm -hmm. there and developing the team that we developed and achieving what we did in a very short amount of time, mm -hmm. getting that team going was a uh, fairly significant uh, success for some of the stage of their career so on that. Project management how? Like for the photography, the publications, things like that? or No, um, IT project management. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's sort of the day job, and okay. then I've got a couple of things that I do in addition to that, obviously, but that's uh, been the primary focus of my career for a while. So, what was it like at the university? Was it a lot of, you know, actually, like, messing around with the hardware and stuff like that, or was it more just closing closing brackets and things like that when you are at it? No, none of the above. Uh, it was a lot of working with people mm -hmm. and understanding what exactly they need to solve technical challenges yep. and finding a way to bridge the gap to the right people in the organization that have the skills to do that. Okay. I totally believe that because when I talk to Colin here, he explains everything in like specific order, steps on how <laughs> to do things and and I, it's so all of a sudden it's so clear to me, you know, like it's he's got that he's got that talent. It's it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks Julia. My my wife really dislikes it when I describe it to her like that, but uh yeah, it's nice to hear that uh, that is uh, appreciated. It, it's helped me out a lot okay. in understanding things and how things work and processes and technicalities. problem solver. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yes. Is that what you do um, at Moreland Professional Projects? Yeah, so our service offering is project management office building, basically. We go into organizations and help them build that function, develop those professional problem solvers in their organization, mm -hmm. and uh, become really good at it, and then we kind of go help somebody else do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So you do a lot more in, say, information exchange and anything else more than anything, or? Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. Just teaching people the know-how and such, huh? Exactly, yes. Okay. So then is that how you managed to swing the uh, photography gig with the uh, Hurricanes and the Prom Lawns, or was that just something that just happened to line up? No, there? that's raw talent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, of course. Okay. No, and, and, the, and the investment and the time, the skills development, yeah. the tools. So the work we do with those organizations is extremely mm -hmm. fulfilling, being able to give something back to the community and obviously do something that's yeah. very visible. Okay. So... Did you get into both of those, like, jobs for the university, like, just by building the rapport, or was it just two separate jobs that just happened in the same place? Completely parallel tracks. Oh. Uh, almost no overlap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Pure talent, right? <laughs> so tell us about your role in leading the biggest IT implementation within city, the city of Edmonton since 2000. Oh, that has been a wild ride, Julia. Last uh, 14 months, one of... Uh, 
Moreland Professional Projects clients has partnered with the city yeah. and brought me on to run the project for them. So, yeah, we've uh, delivered a solution that's completely replaced the recreation management system at every leisure center, attraction, recreation department in the city of Edmonton. Um, it's something that's going to generate over a billion dollars of revenue over 10 years. Wow. Affects over 600,000 people. It's been huge. Yeah, that's why you were telling just over the holidays you were in Edmonton working, right? Oh, uh, yes. Is that part of it? Yeah, I've pretty much been living there half the time for the oh, last uh, wow. eight months. So you've been driving back and forth, working here, working there? Yep, oh. yeah, just putting lots of miles <laughs> on my little Volkswagen. Okay. So, like, day to day, what was your job like over there doing all that work? Like, uh, a lot of meeting with people and mm -hmm. just making sure uh, all the different individuals we're working on, both on our team and the city's mm -hmm. team, all know what they're supposed to be doing, who's on first, yeah. uh, making sure that if things aren't going the way they're supposed to, we're taking the hard decisions early mm -hmm. so we don't get to January when we're supposed to launch this whole thing mm -hmm. and have a whole bunch of centers that don't have any system in place. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, systems for, like, managing just, like, general logistics, like, activity times and hiring, or, like, what sort of systems you say? No, pretty much uh, everything you could possibly consider when you look at running a leisure center. Mm -hmm. So, booking the spaces, managing the user accounts, the membership, yeah. sales, cashiering, all that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, all the real, you know, paperwork or everything, and then just you're the third party for it, in a sense. Yeah, we basically bring in the system that lets them do the paperwork. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so did you go to school to learn all these things, or is this, like, coming naturally for you? Absolutely not. I am a uh, <laughs> success story out of the political science department. <laughs> Those are rare, I understand. Uh, but no, I um, actually got into a career to do technical writing, and then uh, it just went in a totally different direction once <laughs> I started working. Yeah, so you just kind of bumped into these opportunities and took them on as you grew up, grew along the way, you know, in, in your business? Yeah, just uh, had a lot of opportunities and just didn't really feel like saying no to any of them and just yeah, kept wow, saying right? yes and ended up here. Yeah, good job. End up with a lot of talent and a big resume, right? <laughs> uh, long if not good, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your work with the symphony. What were you doing for that? Yeah, so I've been on the symphony board for the last two years oh, as okay. their treasurer. Okay. So basically helping manage the cash flow, the incoming, outgoing funds, and trying to make sure that we continue to uh, grow the organization and uh, don't end up sort of uh, plateauing where we're at. Of course, right. Yeah. So you keep the books in the black for the most part, that sort of thing. Sure trying, but uh, <laughs> donations are always appreciated, especially oh. with our upcoming capital campaign we'll be launching in 2019. Always, then. So you got any events coming up for the symphony soon or fundraisers, <clears throat> anything of that sort? Yeah, well, we were really proud about our Lizzie Hoyt uh, concert that we had just before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, bringing a talent like that to Lethbridge isn't something we get to do every okay. year. So that was really exciting for us to put on. Uh, we do have our remaining concerts of the season up on our website. Mm -hmm. But uh, our major function, Love Notes, is coming up the first weekend. Oh, yeah, in, Love Notes, yeah. Uh, first weekend in February. So really looking forward to getting dressed up in my beach shorts and uh, going out to that. Love Notes, beach shorts. What's that about then? Well, this, uh, every year we have a theme for Love Notes. It's mm -hmm. our big gala fundraiser for the symphony. Yeah. This year, the theme is from the tropics. So oh, okay. Last year, uh, Mr. Spearman and I kind of mm. brought out our Mr. own Mayor. Yeah, he, he beat me last year with his uh, night get-up for our Camelot theme. I'm uh, oh, wow. hoping to up the game this year to uh, <laughs> bring the bring the costume game up. I think you got to go, you know, maybe full out, it's like Blue Hawaii, you know, get the fake hair and everything, big Hawaiian shirt. I was, singing, I was singing the full Borat person. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, your listeners will have to come see uh, to find out what we when have to do. When is it with. again and where is it going to be at? Yeah, so it is the, <clears throat> uh, it's going to be the first weekend in February. Okay. Yeah. So the 9th, that is? Uh, no, uh, the 2nd, I believe. Oh, first weekend. Yep. February, not January. Okay. Yes, okay. Saturday the 2nd. And where is it going to be at? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I've been on the road pretty much all December and January and should have read my notes before coming on the show today, but <laughs> I don't remember offhand. Okay. Um, 
So the events that um, they have, do they also donate to certain charities as well? Or? Well, the symphony itself is a registered charity as oh, a okay. organization. So okay. uh, they do uh, collect the full funds that they bring in for the uh, for the symphony. But there's a number of not pro not not for profit initiatives that they do mm -hmm. throughout the year, uh, such as the Field of Bee concert, which is a way to bring. Uh, music to children and really start building an appreciation for classical music oh, uh, okay. for families in a very approachable manner. So okay. they're music classes? Uh, no, they're actually concerts geared concerts. towards younger audiences. Oh, okay, okay. With uh, significantly reduced uh, ticket price and some uh, uh, free tickets for the groups okay. that uh, apply for them. And they usually hold it at the um, Yates Memorial or? Right, yeah, the, um, the venues change up a bit. Uh, um, some of them are held at the Yates. A lot of them, uh, our concerts are held at the Southminster Church. Mm -hmm. And then for Field of Beat, they actually go out to some of the schools to uh, per perform in wow. their good, environment. Yeah. So classical, what kind of like composers do they usually kind of go through? Oh, it's or is a, it mostly original type of things? No, it's a real mix. Okay. Uh, it's everything from, we've done the Mozarts, the Beethovens. Mm -hmm. uh, we've partnered with the U of L Opera Workshop and done the uh, Gilbert and Sullivan night, which oh, wow, was okay. all sorts of entertaining. Musical children, sort of like that? Uh, some of those, um, <clears throat> and then we've done like video game music Ooh. and everything in between. So wow. it, it's a real mix. Our creative director Glenn Clawson comes up with a whole lot of really exciting stuff for us to put on for the community. Yeah, that's really playing to your audience because I remember even when I was a kid, every time we'd have a really long study break, like in kindergarten, grade school, they'd always play Mozart for us during like our nap breaks and things like that. Oh, yeah. Mozart, that, that will be a uh, nap break for Always sure. Right. Yeah. Well, back to the love notes. I'm really interested in it. Is it an open event? Or yeah, absolutely. Would so, you like to invite our audience to come to it? Yeah, we would love to have everybody out who's able to come join us. Uh, it is our major fundraiser for the year, so uh, our operating fund is definitely <coughs> bolstered a lot by everybody who comes mm -hmm. out, so we would love to have everybody come join us and enjoy what the symphony is putting on. I know we do have a fair number of seats still available, and uh, we'd love to have all those filled if possible. Okay, we'll post the information on our website at pumpedentertainment.com as well to help you out. Just so, because at, at the moment we don't have the specific location yet, um, but we will, so stay tuned for that. Yep. Um, okay. Um, Tell us about your work with the uh, Hurricanes and the Pronghorns. Yeah, so that's under the photography arm. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's the and other the MVP business there. photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's uh, just something that we're really uh, honored to be a part of. So uh, with both clubs and the Bulls actually as well, we mm -hmm. provide game day photography services for their teams. So oh, we wow. go out, we uh, shoot the games, and then make sure that uh, good, high-quality Photography services are available to those clubs afterwards. So you're all over the place, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that uh, mm -hmm. I lean heavily on my team. So we got some really great people working with me there, and we make sure that uh, we get out to all the games, get good coverage, and uh, get that content out to everyone. What about the upcoming U Sports Men's Hockey Hockey Cup in March? Yeah, that's really exciting to see a national yeah. televised tournament like that uh, held here in Lethbridge. Mm. So uh, I know it was. Uh, I'm not supposed to advertise national broadcasters here, but uh, it was pretty exciting to get a message from one of our national sports broadcasters uh, talking to us about where they want us to be and where we can put cameras, where they're going to put cameras. And also just uh, bringing the university sports up to that level of national recognition. It's something where uh, those young adults are really uh, working really hard for their team and representing Lethbridge. So it's just a phenomenal opportunity to showcase us and the local talent that we have here in that Wonderful. Arena. That's wonderful. Well, that's good because it brings up, when we get put on that level of competition, it brings on, like, that level of, like, strive and achievement, right? We, Our athletes have suddenly a higher plateau to reach, you know? Oh, absolutely. And we want to show that Lethbridge is able to and yeah. uh, is actually competing at that level. And, uh we're representing ourselves in that uh, arena, and that's going to be really something that we're very proud to be a part of. It's good that you're providing an outlet for that to be showcased. Yeah, absolutely. Bring that local flavor and the local lens to it is something mm -hmm. that we are very happy to be able to do. So what is it about all this that really drives you? Because those two things seem pretty far apart. You know, your project management and your photography with minimal overlap parallel tracks, like you said. 
What do you say is the one thing that really brings you together? Like, obviously all the talents, but there's got to be one thing driving you through both those things at once, right? Well, I mean, it's vocation and avocation, mm -hmm. right? It's there's what you're good at and pays the bills yeah. and uh, is a way to advance the career. And then there's uh, finding a way to commercialize something that you just love doing. Mm -hmm. When I did photography, uh, it's something that I would do in my downtime to begin with before I started doing this commercially. And uh, you hit a point where if you want to keep getting better at it, you have to start investing in some mm -hmm. equipment. And it always helps to have somebody uh, picking up some of the bill to... Uh, to do that for you. So, Good networking, right? Always. Yeah, absolutely. So just the opportunity to take that and do it a little bit more mm -hmm. as just a hobby and through that avenue do things like our low-cost, no-cost program where we partner with folks like the Make-A-Wish Foundation, mm -hmm. um, Rope for Hope wow. event. That's good. And provide them no-cost services for their events. Um, that's something that we're also able to do through that and really – uh, give back to the community through that avenue as well. So you've done work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation? Yeah, so the wow. Rope for Hope uh, event that they do where they bring people up and have them rappel down the side of the office tower wow. here in downtown Lethbridge. Oh, is that when they're all like, dressed like superheroes? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. that one. So yeah. we didn't actually go down the side of the building, yeah, but yeah. Uh, we, we took photos of everybody who was mm -hmm. doing it. Uh, yeah, one of our photographers was up top. I was down below <laughs> and just hoping no one falls on me, but... Uh, wow. He's up there taking pictures of everyone like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to pretend you know. I'm not nervous. <laughs> yeah, good times. Hey, well, Spider-Man was half web crawler, half photographer, right? So half the job right there. There you go, Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, no, uh, no secret identity, I'm afraid. Uh. So tell us, um, Colin is also um, one of our major sponsors for all our upcoming events this year. Um, tell us uh, more what you have uh, done for, let's say, the first one, our Valentine Beauty Pageant, the Beauty and the Beats. You know, what is your role in, in sponsoring that show? Yeah, so primarily we're looking at this, again, from the photography angle. Just, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, several of your contestants we work with through the photography space. We have pre-existing relationships with mm -hmm. several of them uh, that we've done portfolio building shoots for them or... Uh, they've come out and done promotional material with us for the business. So having the opportunity to bring some of that skill set to your event and mm -hmm. provide you with that in a way that uh, we're obviously as sponsors not going to be uh, charging you an arm and a leg to do that for you. <laughs> um, it's just another great way to bring that sort of professional lens to another aspect of the Lethbridge community and really help out some of the people who have helped build our business and yeah. uh, that we have that great working relationship with in, within that community. And MPB Photography is awarding the winners, uh, the, the top three winners, um, the first, second, and third, um, three-hour portfolio building photo shoot sessions worth $500, valued at $500 each for prizes. And for the remaining participants, uh, one hour portfolio building photo shoot worth three hundred dollars and so they have been very generous with their help and their support and um, the girls really love that idea that you were gonna give them that prize they they are like really looking forward to doing the show e even just for that in itself you know it's so worth it yeah and there's gonna be lots of other prizes from other sponsors as well so um for the House of Ham, they are also the fashion, uh, the photography sponsors. Um, we are actually doing our photo shoot on Sunday for the posters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for that, there are even some models coming from Calgary, Edmonton. Well, you you did the photo shoot in Edmonton, right? With Amon Beer. Yeah, we we've had to reschedule that, but yes, we're getting that all. Okay. Uh, we're getting that all going. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it she he they would be taking the pictures for the posters and for the show for the House of Am Fashion Show on April uh, 12th, that this coming April. So Yeah, and, and I just want to say it's really exciting to work with a business like House of Ham that's really mm -hmm. a local Lethbridge Grim success story, being able to bring uh, their product and uh, their brand into our local community and develop the rapport that they've built up in a relatively short amount of time in business is just really exciting and we're really happy to be working with them. Yeah, and, and, and also just to remind everyone, we always have a partner charity that we donate part of our proceeds with for every event. So 
Um, tell us, Colin, what do you think about that? You mentioned to me before that um, you personally believe that it's very important for people to come out and support um, local businesses, local charities, local events. Um, tell us what you, what you think about that. Well, uh, I probably can't tell you much. Your viewers don't already know Lethbridge is already one of the uh, top giving cities in terms of uh, donation dollars and mm -hmm. volunteer time in Canada per capita. Good job, people. Yeah, Good job. I, I'm just really pleased to be part of that. So um, the ability for us as leaders in the community and individuals who are putting on events and uh, promotional activities mm -hmm. to share some of that success with the others in the community that maybe aren't in such a fortunate position yeah. is really important. And to use these avenues that we have to get the word out about some of the causes that exist. And mm -hmm. one of your guests is going to talk about mm -hmm. the Amethyst Project. Yeah. Um, this is just a great avenue and a great outlet. And since we're already doing these things, to give some of that back is just a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, it's it's always, it's, it's, it's kind of like it completes the whole transaction, you know? Absolutely. It completes the event when you have... Mm -hmm. A charity that you tie it to and you know that you're you know people are getting entertained from it you know you are helping local talents promoting local businesses and also helping our local charities you know that really need our our help and support you know if it's not gonna come from us you know who is it gonna come from right we're all in the same community and we have to support each other so um, um any shout-outs out there, Colin? Is there anybody you'd like to say hi? Any announcements you'd like to make? Well, uh, our MVP photography team just want to say thanks very much for all the hard work. You guys are out doing most of the games so far this season. So uh, great work to you guys. Uh, also, um, I, I'd like to just mention Deb Merrick, uh, who's been a great colleague over the University of Lethbridge. She's retiring tomorrow. So, oh, wow. Congratulations. Uh, here, uh, after many years of successful service there. That's finally, great. finally. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, to all your contestants in your upcoming shows, Julia, mm -hmm. just uh, really looking forward to working with you and uh, really excited to be able to bring our services to your events and make sure that you look as good on camera as you will in person. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, to Julia. Be on our show, Colin. Yeah. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Once Leo. again, Colin Moreland of MPP Photography and Moreland Professional Projects, serving our community. So we will be right back with the next half of our show. And when we come back, we have Amanda Simone, uh, one of the contestants for um, Beauty and the Beats, Beauty Pageant, and Gabriel Thane, a uh, singer, songwriter who's here to perform live. See you guys back in, ha in a few minutes. Take a break. Take a picture. Yep. My hat fell. <laughs> you did so good, Colin. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, I, I know, I, I know. That's what I was looking forward to. We hardly picture. had to do any hosting. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're amazing, Mark. Okay, let's take a picture. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Colin. See you later, Colin. Okay. How's that? Good. It was Good. great. Yeah. 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 We bring yeah. 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 Thank you. 
thank you. Um, it's nice to meet you, Colin. I'm you sure we'll cross paths again sometime. Uh -huh. well, we'll Hope you're all good with scanning. Get us all in the frame a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to keep yeah. you more on the end so you got to know what I'm going to do. on that side of the best. Yeah. 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 How are you doing, Gabriel? Good to see you, bro. Not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you. Yep. Good to see you. I think it's. Uh, can we sit for this one? You know, it looks better. Stand up. I'll show you. Now, maybe some of us can sit in a chair if you want. Do you two want to sit? It's high. Those chairs are for high, right? Yeah. yeah. You want to stand up and stand up for half hour? Yeah. Oh, I know. The women always have. The, no, know, I'm too short. I'm yeah, me too. I'm not exactly Scotty Pippen. You'll be fine. We're going to fit all four What's of us. What's up, Yeah. Let's get on with uh -oh. this. In the center or what, Mom? Where do you want to be? Yeah, I'll just be here. Okay, I'll be here. I'll get in the hood. No, we, we should start in six minutes. So we have half an hour. We've got lots to talk about. Yeah. We might as well go, Mom. Yeah, might as well go. Let's do this. I'm ready. Okay, sure. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Am I in it? Sounds good. We got lots to say. We'll take 35 minutes if we want. <laughs> Short and sweet is best. Amanda? Did we just put this down for now? Or? Just come in a little closer. Oh, just a little further back. There we go. We, go. we good? Okay, yeah. I don't want to. Right now? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second half of the Pumped Up Show. I am Julia Martinez, your host. And co-hosting with me today is Leo Manahan. Good boy. <laughs> and our special guest for the second half is Miss Amanda Simone. What's up, L.A.? Um, owner uh, of uh, Vanity Lashes and also one of the beautiful contestants for the um, Beauty and the Beats beauty pageant this coming Valentine's uh, happening at Soundgarden. Um, so, um, and, uh, and our other special guest is Gabriel Thane. A, a very talented singer-songwriter locally here from Lethbridge, Alberta. So right now, we'll start off with Gabriel playing us one of his best songs. Can I play a song? Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. So what are you going to open up with? <laughs> with one of the best songs. Yeah. Well, that's too. <laughs> one of your favorite songs. Favorite songs. <laughs> How about something... Um, Gabe style. All let's, right. Let's gave it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote this song about a chickadee. He was sitting in his tree just looking at me. I said, come on over and sing with me. I wrote a new song. I need some harmony. Well, he didn't move a single muscle, you see. He just sat in his tree just looking at me. So I played him a song in the key of E. What do you know who started singing with me? That's what he sang. Song for you and me. We could 
dancing together in harmony. Won't you fly over and sing with me? seen that chickadee just flew on up and away from me now i'll never know what it's like on leave with the songbirds singing harmony oh but i think about it time to time when i'm singing songs and writing rhymes it might be my mind playing tricks you see but every once in a while i hear singing with me that's what he's singing songs about birds so <laughs> you love birds eh? i do i take pictures of birds too every oh day. yeah you said you were um into photography as well right? you were saying earlier yeah that's kind of what pays the bills it's hard to pay bills as a musician so uh, <laughs> yeah but you're pretty popular amongst like your peers too and stuff like other other musicians um i, I mean getting there you know i've just been um working my way uh, getting to know people in the scene in the last few years you know just a little bit at a time uh photography was a really kind of nice way to uh, get into the scene here uh, I had just moved back uh, to Lethbridge uh, from Ontario and I uh, um, was trying to get to know people in the scene and I was started doing, taking pictures in, yeah. you know, uh, of people at, at mm -hmm. shows and you know, just giving them their pictures and then you know a lot of people started using my pictures as their uh, profile picture. Yeah, and, I have seen you know. a lot of that, like um, p um, pictures of musicians, local musicians yeah, yeah, yeah. and it says great Gabriel Thane on it and I'm like, is he Gabriel Thane too? <laughs> oh no, it's because I know Gabriel Thane is a musician, so why does Cornelius Cole have Gabriel Thane? Uh, yeah. And he said, oh yeah, Gabriel's a friend of mine, and he took this picture, so yeah. Yeah, I do enjoy photography a lot. I, um, it kind of, um, I've been a musician my whole life, but uh, it was getting into photography about five years ago that gave me the uh, kind of confidence to be an artist, you know, to be okay with being a professional artist. And, yeah. You know, I'd been working away and going to, you know, university a long time trying to figure out, you know, to get a job, do something, you know, and then I didn't, you know, I didn't even think of that as an option of being mm -hmm. a professional artist, you know. So. Yeah. But if, every form of expression, you know, it's worth pursuing, right? If if your heart is in it, you, you know, your chances are of, of succeeding is very high or very likely. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really started to enjoy it, you know, and start to uh, get get my own kind of style doing photography yeah. and, and really yeah. loving it, putting in a lot of time and practice, you know, and, and really, and so then I started, and then uh, um, I got back, you know, about four years ago doing, going to open mics and just started playing music every day, mm -hmm. you know, and so now I play several, you know, several hours a day yeah. and just put in the time now and play a lot. So. so would you say that photography was a secondary outlet for you, sort of, in a sense? Well, it, for, it ended up being a primary one for a while, yeah. but, but I, I just... Uh, Music wasn't something that I thought I was ever going to do mm -hmm. um, as a as a job. I never. I used to just you know play covers and and uh, I never wrote music yeah. really on my own much. A little bit here and there, you know, but it was always really tough. And then I started writing, you know, mm -hmm. and then I've written a lot of songs in the last few years. So. Well, I was going to say it seems like your photography and going to music would be singing about chickadees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sit there and look through these pictures of birds, you know, and it, it kind of helps inspire. Feel so. inspired, right? Yeah. So Amanda, Miss Amanda Simone, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you so much for I'm having me. I'm, I'm excited. I'm so glad you were able to come out today. Of course, on yeah. short notice and all. Yeah, she's actually a good friend of mine, you know. We just met each other recently, but we've gotten along so well so far. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I love you. You're a dear. Uh, <laughs> she is um, going to be um, competing in the Beauty and the Beats Miss Valentine's Sweetheart Beauty Pageant 2019. Um, tell us about that. It's like a 40-year-old crisis. That's what that is. It's like a life crisis. I swear, it's not 50, it's 40 for me. Um, Uh-oh. Hey, you're disappearing like, ah, you're you're into the nothingness. Hi. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I just feel like I'm on these 
um, lots of ventures and stuff. As my followers know, I'm on Instagram as well, and I'm coming out with um, an eyelash line um, this year. Actually, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, tell us about your eyelash line. What is it all about? Um, so, like some some people said, and I, I've said on previous show, um, it's called Vanity Lashes, and um, it's going to be numerous collections of different types of lashes. Thank you. Uh, different types of lashes, and it's going to be a strong and fierce collection. I am um, collaborating with the YWCA. I have some meetings coming out with the pink tie. Um, I'm actually um, building up a fundraiser for the Amethyst Project at the moment. Tell us about that. Um, Amethyst Project um, is super important. It's for uh, victims of sexual assault and sexual violence, and um, it needs a lot of babies, babying a little bit, uh, Lethbridge. And I really want to come out and educate the community that there is a safe place for victims to go. Um, and it's one of those um, nonprofits that hit home for me. Mm -hmm. That's good. So you are having, um, aside from the Beauty and the Beats, um, well, tell us a little bit more about that before we get on to other um, Beauty and the Beats, uh, obviously you no know, one's seen me in the promo she stuff. I'm a late be. entry. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. I, I honestly, um, I can't stand here and say, I'm in it to win. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say if I don't win, I'm not going to be overly, yeah. you know, happy yeah. and be like, yeah. it's like going to be awesome. princess. Gonna be um, but no, it's going to be fun. And I'm looking forward to being out the, in the community and putting myself into situations uh, like this. So what yeah. are you planning to bring to the show? Like spice, personality, um, fierceness? I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm just going to be me as usual, right? Yeah. I don't think I need to put a little bit more spice in what I already <laughs> am. Well, I think um, like Zoolander, right? Pretty you spicy. So spicy. <laughs> it's really, right? You gotta have your blue steel. You gotta have your mouth. Yeah, I, um, have... I have a couple of, uh, you know, Maybe little. Maybe not ready yet. No. <laughs> it's kind of like a, I go 100 percent or not mm -hmm. at all. So definitely, I'm gonna be going 100 percent. So like you're gonna go bright colors. Like I'm flashy, like flingy. Like... I'm gonna be like, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. <laughs> oh, and this is gonna happen. So it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm really excited, and I'm and mm -hmm. I'm really happy that you're bringing in Interfaith Food Bank yeah. as one of your um, nonprofits. Yeah. No, it must it must really drive you a lot to know that we're doing a lot of this like for charities you appreciate as well. Like you know, yeah. Of course, some of what you get if you get the cash prize, you know, whoever wins, of course. But obviously, that some of that would probably go to the Amethyst Project and all yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. You know, like, um, that right must really now, drive you, huh? All the char I, charities. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really excited because on Saturday's show, I have Melissa from uh, Lepers Living Magazine mm -hmm. coming, and you know, we have that new sexual assault center. And um, you know, like I am looking for sponsors right now. I'm looking for volunteers mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. such a good cause. April 20th is going to be the event. Please keep a lookout for all the details in March. And I'm going to be out. Everybody's going to see me. I'm going to start now working and I'm going to see who would like to um, contribute contribute to this cause. Um, half of my proceeds of my eyelashes will go to the Amethyst Project. There will be ticket sales as well. Mm -hmm. So all those folks go for details in March. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us where, so you said, mention, you mentioned earlier that you're from Ontario originally. Oh no, I uh, know. So I just spent a year out there going to school. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, that's where you went to yeah, school? Yeah, I, 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 I was from, I'm from out here. Um, okay. And then I went to the University of Western Ontario for a year. So whereabouts is that anyways? Yeah, in was it uh, London? Oh, in London. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. The University of Western is in uh, is in London. Yeah. Right? Or I think they just call it Western University. It changed. Yeah. Right after I left, or right at the same time. So, what'd you go for? Your photography? Or uh, no, I, I was actually doing a master's in linguistics, and then I, okay. I stopped halfway through, and you know, I was going to go straight through and do a PhD and everything, but uh, that was, uh, I don't know. So you go where the wind blows yeah. you. <laughs> well, where's yeah. the fun in that, right? You get a lot more linguistics out of learning music. And hey, yeah, exactly. Well, hey, and you know, and, and I, I studied linguistics and, and literature in my uh, in, one, in my undergrad, and, yeah. and 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 you know, sometimes as you think, oh, my arts degree isn't doing anything to help me, but hey, you know, it's helped us with l writing lyrics and uh, stuff, just so. an exposure to a lot of different you know, things to take inspiration from. Yeah, uh, I read a lot of poetry, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> In school, so, so like, what did you read during your literature program? Like, you ever talked to Jack Kerouac, anything like that? Uh, actually, see, I was doing most of my literature stuff. It was in Spanish. Oh, um, okay. I did so. a degree in, in uh, linguistics in Spanish. Okay, so, so you do Don Quixote or anything like that? Uh, we read passages from Don oh, okay. Quixote, but we read a lot of uh, um, a lot of po a lot of uh, Spanish poetry, yeah. Spanish um, like Spanish sonnets, and uh, De Colores, uh, Garcilaso, and I don't remember now. It's been a little while. Yeah. I think that sounds familiar, but like I said, it's been a few years now. I graduated in 2012, so. Okay, fair enough. 
That's just a book. Oh, yeah. The names they start to. Uh, no, no, it's great. I, I just <laughs> met, we read a lot of. Uh, I didn't remember a lot of the, the names of because uh, they were all you know some of the Spanish names were hard mm -hmm. to remember. But uh, of course. When did you start playing music? How old were you? Oh, I, I've been singing since I could remember. So my whole family, uh, my whole family is is musicians. So I grew up. Uh, I have four sisters, and we all, and my parents and my sisters all sing. So we, I've been singing since I could. I like played the guitar. Uh, I started playing the guitar when I was 14, okay. and then started getting into other instruments after that. So now I play just about everything I can get my hands on. So. Wow! So, with the degree in Spanish literature or the study, I should say, anyways, I'm surprised you didn't end up as like a mariachi or something. Like <laughs> like. Well, you know, a little bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's Zorro. Oh, go Desperado if you want. I'm always good with the banderas. <laughs> 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 alright, that's not Why don't you play us that? That sounds good. Well, that's alright. I was just messing around. <laughs> I like doing that. I actually play that. I'll, when I, I when I play a show, I'll play the ukulele and I'll play uh, I'll play flamenco sounding stuff on the ukulele. Okay. It's, it's a lot of fun to just. You got a flamenco do. track in a few seconds, or what? Do you have one you could play in a bit? I don't actually. No, I just I just have a little. I just play a little bit of that on the ukulele as kind of for fun and okay. stuff. So, but I mean, I haven't I haven't done a lot of that stuff, but just like I'm. A, Jam on camera for a bit, that'd be nice. So, wow. You have a disc for right? Yeah. It's been good. Yeah. Well, while he jams, let's chat a little lightly. So, you got your own mass show coming up. It's not quite Zorro itself, but. You've got yeah. a coming up, right? Yeah, actually, um, I'm really excited uh, to be actually collaborating with you guys, too, in April um, for the House of Hands fashion show. I'm going to be emceeing, so definitely keep a lookout when they come out with the information. That's um, going to be at Club Lime on April 12th at 7 p.m. It's yeah. going to be great. Yep. House of Ham Consignment Boutique features all their finest clothing on 10 oh, high-end fashion models. That, hmm? that, that, that place is on, uh, was it 4th Avenue? Yeah. And, uh, it's it's the first, yeah. Fourth, 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 Fourth Avenue and like 11th Street? 11th or so, yeah. yeah. Right on the corner. No, oh, uh, House, the, of Ham. House of Ham. Oh, House of Sorry, Ham, I was yeah. playing and I only <laughs> heard part of it and I just got yeah, it. Yeah, it's that old, uh, old-fashioned building there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a heritage building. Yeah. It's great. You walk in, fancy old building, but you can find a Gucci handbags and all that sort of thing on display. Yeah, all brand new clothing there. Little taste of Tiffany's right in our hometown. <laughs> yeah, about my show, it, it's just uh, super exciting. I had my first show last Saturday. Um, I was a, a guest on Danica and Tammy. It's talking about health and beauty. I love those girls. Hey, girls. Uh, thanks for having me. And then um, I'm just really excited. I People in the community um, that are bringing this community together and, and working together to to build and, and involve this community in something absolutely positive. Um, I'm actually resonating towards so many people. I had Carla Pindaloo from Celebrate Downtown. I have Melissa from Le the Lethbridge Living Magazine. I have Dione from Once Upon a Bride. I have Bridge, sorry, Bridge uh, City Buds coming in. And then I have actually a special edition show that I'm doing on the 23rd. It's with the YWCA talking about the Amethyst Project. So, oh, awesome. nice. yeah. with all these charity work, what's the biggest thing driving you behind all of it? Like, you're chasing after all these charities, all these shows, like a mad woman. I what's know, I just thing? came out of the left field. I'm like, what's up, LA? And now you're swinging, <laughs> now you're just coming out swinging. Yeah, I'm so. really networking. I'm really, really working super hard. What's the hard. biggest thing, like, driving you behind that, though? Like, my, really I think, my, I think uh, my, my life story and my life experiences yeah. um, have really driven me um, to be able to be in the position I'm yes. at now and, and help others. Like share that strength you have with others. Yeah, you know, right? absolutely. And, and you know, it, it's, it's challenging for myself too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you go through so much stuff in your life, like I have, you get to those points of like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, what can I do with my life that's going to make a difference? Not only in other people's, but, but for me, like challenge myself. Like there's no, I can't do it. Yeah. There's like, Yes, I'm going to do it, regardless of how long it takes. Well, the biggest thing is, is like when you see other people do it, you just have to learn from them. And it's like, well, if they can do it, why can't I? Right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like a lot of things are fear-based for humans, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, failure and career and acceptance in school and of all course, these right. things, right? You fear what you don't know. And when you've constantly, you know, been brainwashed, like I, I've said in some of my stories on Facebook, my personal stories mm -hmm. I've been sharing lately, um, you know, you, you come to a point, you're like, 
you know, I was the only person telling me I can't. Yeah. Right? I really believe how you act and, and how people perceive you if is your drive. If you you're driven and you're I'm pulling myself vulnerable, right? Of course I'm I'm under the realization I'm gonna be you criticized and everything, but you know what? I'm putting myself out to be vulnerable to educate, right? I'm not putting myself out to be vulnerable to hurt. There's a big difference. Well the greatest strength is being able to show your neck and not be afraid, honestly. Like Yeah. After a while, you come to anticipate it, you know, you expose it and yep. you see it coming, you know exactly, you know, when to put your guard up, when to, cut, yep. when to lean back and just shrug it off, right? Uh, absolutely. Right. And, and it's interesting, like, to notice how I evolved and how my life has evolved, you know, in such a short time, you know, being yeah. homeless with my son last year to, to where I'm at. And, you know, it's like I said in one of my tutorials, like, keep telling me I'm going to fail. Mm -hmm. Because it's just going to push me harder. So, and what's the worst that's going to happen? Mm -hmm. That I am going to fail? Okay, well, I'm going to learn. I'm going to adjust just to how I can succeed. So right? then for that, what yep. would you say was your biggest inspiration, like mindset-wise, look-wise? Like what really gave you that sort of sense of the, like what gave you that persona to take on, you know, I'm not going to take any, I'm not going to take any crud and I'm going to take no trouble from no one, you know, like um, what made you stop, put, strap your I, boots I on? Think, I honestly say. think I've always been like that, I've worked with you, right? But like you said, like you, you've improved so much, mm -hmm. like you went from, like you said, homeless with your son to yeah. where you are now, what would you say would have been the biggest change in that time frame or just in general for you? I started movies? believing in myself, right? Yeah. And, you know, like being humble as I am and I really struggled, mm -hmm. for, struggled with religion in my life of and course. I struggled with faith, right? You know, I, I literally gave up on God. I gave up on faith. I gave up on humanity. So. I, I just gave, right? And I was like, no, I needed to totally let myself go and, you know, let go in order to move forward. And like, so. holy shit, I am a good person. You put all your faith in yourself, huh? Well, More I have, I say? have to, because in the end of the day, I'm the one doing the actions. the around you that you... Yeah, you know, yeah, in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah it, in a sense, but unless I start believing in myself and people seeing it, how is anybody else going to believe in me well, exactly, unless I'm right. showing it that I believe it in myself? You, know, you got to right? be a, like a role model for others, right? Because yeah. if they don't believe in themselves and you don't believe in themselves, what do they really have to, you know, take yeah. from, right? But if at least you set that good example, people can be like, Absolutely. maybe I'll take some of this, some of this sass, some of that strut, you know, yeah. just perk myself up a bit, take some yeah. of that from myself and see how I sort of make it a part of myself, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Instead of like turning it around and, and making it into negativity, it's like, yeah. what if you're going to criticize me for really exposing my life and trying to help others, what does that say about you? Well, right? Exactly, right. You know, so in the end of the day, not to sound like a total bitch, but I really don't <laughs> give a shit because I'm going to be full force. Of course. And I'm going to come out and I'm going to help people. And I'm going to make a difference. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take. I'm going to do it. Well, exactly, right? right? So. By the way, to our viewers, um, Gabriel is giving away a couple of his CDs tonight. Ooh. So if you would like one a, a copy of a free copy of his CD, um, comment li comment on our live stream, comment CD, and we will contact you. And you, if you oh, more than two. Oh That's yeah, sorry, eight. I think I've got about four or five. Of four nice. or five, yeah. So nice. yeah, comment CD on our live stream, and if you're the lucky winner. You will get a free CD from Gabriel Thane. So, Mr. Thane, another quick question for you. One of your biggest influences? Music influence? Music. Um, probably for me, like, uh, like there's, I mean, there's lots and lots of music that I love and lots of people have influenced. Like, but I think, like, top one, mm -hmm. top, ins like, uh, probably Hoxley Workman. Hoxley Workman? Yeah, I've heard I love, one lately. I love Hoxley Workman, especially because he, uh, and he's, he's kind of a do everything himself, you know, mm -hmm. plays all the instruments and, and just kind of, like, you know, camps out and records all the stuff, and that's what I've been working on, and just all that. You know, and he, he's just got this incredible uh, uh, stage presence, too, when he plays, like, in his poetry of his songs, and he just keeps moving and just writing and writing and writing. He's just, he's just like a, the guy is just a kind of crazy basket of ideas. I always <laughs> love his music videos. I remember one of his music videos is like him on, like, a Japanese game show or something like that. I always crack up with that he's one. A, yeah, I don't... But yeah, a man's got imagination. He's fantastic. just an insanely good performer and a songwriter, and is, like, the poetry to his lyrics and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he always tries new things. Like, I haven't loved every song he's ever done because he just keeps trying all these different all things. All of his places. No, no fear, right? As you were saying, I like that. And I liked what you were saying about uh, the fear-based stuff, right? Because it, you know, you that was a big thing for me too. I was like, well, how do, you know, you see other people have shows and mm -hmm. you're like, well, I want to have a show. And you're like, well, I'll just put it on, you know? Yeah. You find other pe just people putting on shows, you know, and you, all you have to do is just ask and say, you know, can we do a show? No and, initiation, you know, right? It's just, you just do it, walk right? In. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a lot. That's been. This, I've been trying to find the same kind of thing. as just getting over the myself of of just you know. I grew up as doing music as as you know, always do it as a hobby yeah. and stuff. And especially the way I grew up, uh, very religious. You don't really 
wasn't really common to do music yeah. as a, as a, as a uh, an entertainment factor. Or yeah, you just always do it as on the side, right? It's something you give. You do it. You 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 only, you only do music yeah, as a real job. Yeah, you only yeah. do music as kind of like a volunteer or a giving kind of thing yeah. towards. You know, it's meant to be. You know, you. Um, Kumbaya. So it, was, it took me a while Kumbaya. to learn how to charge. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to learn how to charge money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, would you like to thank our sponsors today? Yeah. For now, with that all said, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors for this show. Starting with Moreland Professional Projects, MPP Photography, Soundgarden Club 21, B93 FM, Cat Panic Makeup Artist, Makeup Factor, Lash Empire, Angel's Touch Salon, Naturally Inspired Beauty Shop, Jess FM, Lightbridge Images, Lay's Nail Salon, Naturistas, Interfaith Food Bank, Shanty's Boutique, <laughs> Ram yeah. Entertainment, Simply Entertainment, Simply Delivery, Club Lime, House of Ham, Lethbridge Shelter and Rescue Shelter, uh, The Catwalk Salon, Whippy's Fish and Chips, LA Convenience and Liquor Store, Vanity Lashes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Custom. Cujo's Custom, Cujo's Custom, Custom Wood. Wood and Builders. Bikers building bridges. Thank you very much, sponsors. Thank you all for your support. Keep up and work, everybody. Before, before we go, one more song sure. from our talented. Yes, please. Did we talk about the variety show? Did we... Yes. Oh, oh can we let's do it. it. Yeah. No, let's yeah, 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 oh, yeah, oh, sure. Talk about it. Yeah, I just want to say uh, um, I host. Uh, uh, well, I don't. Uh, I'm not hosting anymore. I, I but I, I've created a show that I do every month at the um, the slice called the High Level Variety. That's the third Tuesday of every month. The next one is February 19th. February 19th. February 19th. February 19th. So nice. the catchphrase is show up, show off. So you just, yep. you any sort of entertainment, um, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun so far. I, I play the, what it is, uh, I'm, I've just been leading the house band so far. We, we have like a house band that kind of plays in between, you know, when... You know, we have a couple people performing. Is and we there get back a Facebook and, page for this event? Uh, there, there is a, there is an, there is an event. I, I'm starting to, I'm trying to figure out to, that, you know, a Facebook page, like a, like a, a group. Yeah. Or an event. Where like, not just an event, the but like, like yeah, monthly, what days? Because I think, because the hard, the hard part is trying to figure out stuff on Facebook. Because mm -hmm. the event is tough. Because those, those recurring ones, I find they're, they're tough to get the, yeah. the word on. But I was like, but then do I want to do a separate one for every month or I don't know. So. Mm. Oh, is it like you well, said? Maybe a page, maybe a Facebook page, right? To get you know. Yeah. So every month you can just make the announcement on the page. Just walk in and do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually better. Maybe that's a good idea. Well, February nineteenth at the Slice, everyone. Show, show up. Come join and us. Show up and show up. I'll be off. there too. <laughs> All right, February nineteenth. Yes. So comedy. You can hear me playing some more music, and there'll be comedy. We got uh, usually people doing some juggling. We'll Open mic, everyone. We'll, well, yeah, we'll Bring see. Bring your we can talents, Lethbridge. Bring it on. Yeah. All right, one more song. Okay. All right. Thank so. you, everyone. This has been the Pump Entertainment Show. I've been Julia Martinez. Do you want something? Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Leo Manahan. Leo Manahan. Amanda Simone. And we'll leave you with Gabriel Thing. Showing his oh, talents. Yeah. You do. Showing up and showing off. <laughs>
long, baby, you don't know how much I want to see you. Come and see by my side if you want me. I'll never tell you goodbye if you love me. Come and see by my side if you want me. I'll never tell.